Thank you all for coming. Thank you so much. We're, we're gonna talk today about a very special movie. We're gonna talk about cinema. Shock tale. I'm Nick. I'm Hunter. And we got a very special guest today. Uh, Lucas Arnold. Introduce yourself. I, I, but you already did. I don't need to introduce myself. You just did. So, so I have I have no job. Oh, right that's now, true. You can leave now. And... You can okay, go. Bye yeah, bye. we're good. All it's right, bye, all right. Lucas. Bye, Lucas. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad to be sure. here, man. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, this is gonna be so fun. There, there's a few questions I had just about like the world of Shark Tale. Yeah. If if you'll indulge me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it. yeah. Uh, so there a few things. Uh, so, uh, some fishes are cars. Or or garbage trucks, which is uh, which is interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, like some of them are just like you know regular fish folk, but then some of them are used as like cars or taxis like, or garbage trucks. Like it's like very working working at the car wash and it's a whale wash. Yeah, they, they yeah. <laughs> yeah they sing this the whole song wash. like working at, at the, the car, car wash. wash. This is a whale wash. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a car wash. We're not a car wash. I'm trying to be related. How do you wait? How do you know what cars even are? <laughs> uh, well, I guess they might have ones. That, would they dump used cars in the ocean? I don't. I know no, that they're like shoes, because right? they because they have fishes for that. <laughs> yes, exactly. So but... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how they know cars. It's very strange. I have no idea. Oh, that's that's so weird. All right, Nick. Uh, question number two. <laughs> uh yeah. So uh. They have shark mafia meetings on the Titanic. Did you guys notice that? I okay. I'll be no. honest. I watched this like a few days ago to like rem and like yeah, I, yeah. I didn't remember that bit. Yeah. So I just watched yeah. it like a, like an hour or so ago. Yeah. The, yeah. They, it's the Titanic because because not only is it you know broken in half, but yeah. also one when, once you're like you know in the uh, inside the boat, there's a picture of. Of Rose from Titanic, like you know the picture that he takes or the drawing that he makes for Rose. Uh huh. That when remember when a, a Sykes, the Martin Scorsese fish, like like he the shark, uh, Robert De Niro shark throws him and he sticks to like a painting or whatever. That's the painting oh, of yeah. Rose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was oh, like a th yeah. it was a thing oh, I noticed. I, I was like, oh, I did not catch that. Yeah, that's yeah. I didn't catch that either. Oh my god, I never realized that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Fantastic. About Rose. Oh my god, that's that amazing. Was just I was just fixated on a Martin Scorsese's eyebrows, <laughs> Sykes's eyebrows, you know? Yeah, he has oh, humongous like... eyebrows. Huge. They're, they're beautiful. Yeah. Huge. They're huge. Just like his own in real life. Martin Scorsese <laughs> in yeah. this movie, which is wild. And can we talk about that for a second? Can we talk about that? Yeah. Um, why is he in this movie? <laughs> I Why don't not? remember, but I remember in the special features because I was big into watching special features of the DVD when I was a kid. And all I remember from the special, I didn't watch that, but uh, I remember he says, I naturally have a lot of hip hop in my vocabulary. That's all I remember him saying. He's like, well, <laughs> hey, you know, I, I, I respect it. I respect it. I mean, <laughs> yo, 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 oh yo, yo, God. yo, yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, what a performance. I mean, Such like, does it has he ever like voiced a character ever again? I don't it's like a one time only, thing. The only times I remember him in a movie was in that little bit in Taxi Driver. Right. He's right, the passenger. Right. And he's talking about killing that dude. And in right. Shark Tale. That's all I know about. <laughs> that's all I know that he's in. It's, Do you guys have a like a, a part in this movie that's like, oh, that's like really good. Like your favorite part. Well, I, I think there's a very small visual gag that I thought was very well timed, and it's like a blink and you'll miss it kind of moment where uh, I think the octopus, uh, like it, during the funeral, he he pours uh, some tea for the Robert De Niro shark, and he's pouring it, but they're underwater, so the tea just kind of floats away, <laughs> and he yeah. and he and he still gives the cup of tea to the shark. So that was really funny. I thought I was like, "That's that's just like a that's blink a and really you'll miss moment. it." Blink and you'll miss it. Just like gag that I really liked. Remember, there's because like I remember in Harry Potter when Hagrid used like a stake to like uh, tend to his wound, and they use like a sea slug or something. Oh right, yeah, for Oscar, there's... yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you see it like crawling away yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. It was little details like that of like, oh, I guess that's why they're using. It. And then you see it actually like being. An animal and it was little things it's like they thought of ways that 
of how to rep like something you have in real life that could be represented on on in the ocean and then what that would do after the scene or whatever its function mm -hmm. was like what would happen afterwards i i they did a bunch of things like that which was fun little logistic things that just scratch your brain really well it was interesting because i didn't pick up on like the sort of the the gay theme with um, right yeah me neither yeah with lenny but it totally was there because they they because like when at the very end, like when Don Lino and Lenny reconcile is like, I don't care what you eat or how you dress, that he likes to dress up, that he right. likes to. He dresses up as a dolphin. That's right. Exactly. And um, and the thing that like that that was given equal footing in terms of the acceptance, it was like it's yeah, it's definitely it's definitely there. I think that was my favorite uh, part of the movie is like Lenny's uh, journey. I, I and I really think like uh when Will Smith at the end, he's all like, "What? Like we all love him the way he is. Like why can't you?" And I was like, "Oh, that's a, that's such a good good moment." Um, but also could be a, a trans allegory too. I think. With, yeah, that's with what. Him. That's, yeah, what, I, could that's be. what I picked up. Well, yeah, it's it's yeah. a very open. It's a very yeah, open yeah. allegory, but it's very clearly with it's mm -hmm. very clearly within the LGBTQ plus community. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Just a little bit off topic, but it does remind me. I'm not sure if you guys are fans of like Star Trek: The Next Generation. But there was an episode of that that's very clearly about uh, LGBTQ plus people. It's it's where Riker falls in love with a member of a genderless species, and that this person, this individual, comes out to him as a woman, and says that the history of the species is that they used to have gender, but gender was abolished, and occasionally people come out as male or female, and these people get sent away to re-education camps, essentially, and they get cut, and they, and when they return, they're like, "I am genderless. I don't. I was so foolish. I was evil before, and I've I've been corrected." And that it's actually kind of a tragic story because, like, the person that Riker falls in love with, she um, she gets sort of taken over by the dominant voices of her society and says no no no! i need to go get re-educated and i need to be corrected because i am wrong and riker's oh, like but i love you and and she's like i'm sorry it just it's not right and then he goes back and then it's just a tragic sad story Oof, of like oh, wow. falling in love and then just being just having it shattered and it it really stuck in my mind as and i think that was in like the early 90s or something so definitely like there's a long history of very intentional of uh, um stories about the lgbtq plus experience yeah it's kind of always really intriguing to like go back to old movies from like the 80s 90s 2000s yeah and they have those kind of messages in there and it's like wow like some some of these shows and movies were kind of giving us these really profound messages like oh yeah way, way before our current uh cultural climates so that's totally. I, I, I always find that super interesting like who it's, was yeah, the, who, so who was that who was already ahead of the curve you know well, yeah, yeah even uh uh like there's a Hugh Grant movie from like late 80s um where like it's a it's a gay love story and it's like dang that's Whoa. like ahead of, that's Do you ahead remember of the what curve. it's called oh, I can look it up right now oh. the Hugh Grant movie's called Maurice and uh came out in 1987 wow yeah wow it's like dang that's crazy ahead of the curve right there oh yeah wow it kind of mm. also reminds me of, uh, I don't know if you've seen this, Lucas, uh, the Simpsons episode where there's a, a gay guy. Um, a, oh, yeah. Uh, and he, 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 he befriends a gay guy. and He drives a convertible and he's like, yeah. yeah oh, and episode. he's played by, uh, what's, who's he played by? He's played by a famous guy. Uh, I th something Waters. John uh, Waters? John Waters, yeah. John Waters yeah. plays uh, the gay guy in it. And yeah, and I, 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 cause I just recently binged the Simpsons like a couple months ago and I was like, wow, this is actually like a really progressive, like profound episode while still being funny because it, it's at the expense of Homer's homophobia. It's not the, at mm. the expense of him, of the gay guy, of, of him being yeah. gay. Mm. So that's, I always found that like super interesting. And by the end, Homer, you know, accepts him and, uh, and John Waters is like, if every gay guy could save your life, you know, you'd be set. <laughs> you know, you, you you'd have no issues <laughs> with uh, with gay people at all. You know, and I thought that was yeah. a really like funny, profound thing. So that reminds me a of good that line, too. Yeah. So there's definitely there's a, a longer history than we often give credit for. Absolutely. Yeah. Very true. well said. Very true. Yeah. 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 So Shark Tale. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, stop getting off topic, guys. No, why, <laughs> why are you guys getting instantly off topic? <laughs> no, I don't think it is. I like while watching this movie. I was like, ah, Shark Tale, but it has a lot of different um uh, topics and like uh, uh, messages and stuff like that. And I was like, dang, that's really cool. Great it's a, watch. I would say, a whale of a time. <laughs> 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 yeah, that took out my spleen that <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was our uh shark tail discussion um uh thank you hunter for being a wonderful co-host as always and thank you lucas thank you so much for being such a wonderful guest star yes thank was, you for having me on guys uh, it was wonderful thank you so much nice yeah this was so fun uh, uh where can we find you lucas uh, you can find me online on all social media at Lucas T. Arnold, uh, lucastarnold.com. Um, I also have a podcast of my own called Two Nosy Meerkats. And you can find us on all social media at Two Nosy Meerkats and anywhere you get your podcasts, um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, we're everywhere. That's a great name, and, by the way, for a yeah, podcast. Okay, that was the, yeah. that's, the best, <laughs> that's the best name ever. <laughs> You can find us right now anywhere you listen to podcasts. Please consider liking and following us on these platforms. Please like, subscribe, and consider leaving us a review on iTunes. Look out for more updates and new episodes every week. Tune in next week. That's right, Gina Carano is coming on the show. We're, we're going to talk all. We're going to talk all things cancel culture and her new movie with Ben Shapiro. So so stay tuned for that. Yes. <laughs> the left is coming yes. after all of us, Nick. <laughs> yes. Oh wow. Thanks for listening, why do, guys. Why do I want Ben Shapiro to be our next guest? Can we <laughs> ben <Yes>. Shapiro on? <laughs> um <laughs> hypothetically, if you were to have um Oscar as like uh, having a little bit of a um uh more of a uh succulent backstory where you have more of a um uh hypothetically a uh, better uh, relationship with his father, um it, I think it would have been a, a better movie and a better score from uh, Nicholas Mana if you were uh Yes. <laughs> thank oh you. Oh my ben. gosh. Thank you, Ben, for coming on the show. Yeah. Th <laughs> th amazing. Thank you. So ben, that was beautiful. Thank you that so much. Beautiful. If you could just take a moment to define uh, the female orgasm, I've only heard of it. Um, but <laughs> <laughs>